Hey there, welcome back to Story Slices, where we slice through the best Reddit tales just for you. Let's dive right into the first story. This one is an entitled People Pro Revenge Story. I'll admit I'm not the best when it comes to yard work or landscaping. I don't have much of a green thumb, but I try my best to keep my little yard looking nice. A couple years ago, I decided I wanted to spruce things up a bit and make my backyard more fun and welcoming. I built myself a little fire pit out of some bricks I had left over from another project. It wasn't fancy, just a simple ring I made so I could have small fires and roast marshmallows or hot dogs. I was pretty proud of my handiwork. I also added a few garden gnomes and other cute statues around my flower beds. Hey, don't judge me. I think they add personality. I got most of the decorations on clearance or from garage sales. Everything was going great until Karen from the Homeowners Association stuck her nose in my business. One Saturday morning, I was out mowing my lawn when she came marching over, a stern look on her face. Right away, I knew I was in for it. Excuse me, but we've received complaints about that fire pit of yours, she said, pointing her bony finger. Oh yeah? What kind of complaints? I asked defensively. Well, for starters, open fires are prohibited in this neighborhood. They're dangerous and a liability. I'm afraid you'll have to dismantle it immediately. My jaw just about hit the floor. I tried explaining that it was just a tiny fire pit for roasting marshmallows, not a raging bonfire. But Karen wasn't having it. Rules are rules. Now take it down before I issue you fine, she scolded before stomping away. I was fuming. That fire pit wasn't hurting anybody. But not wanting to make waves, I begrudgingly took it apart. I thought my issues with the homeowners association were over. But boy was I wrong. Just a week later, I got a letter saying my yard decorations were an eyesore and I needed to remove them. What? I liked my silly gnomes and statues. They gave my yard personality. When I protested the order, I was told my decor was considered a hazard because of sharp edges and places kids could get fingers stuck. Give me a break. These were just cheap garden decorations, not bear traps. Again, not wanting to get on the homeowners association's bad side, I removed the decorations. My yard was now barren and boring all thanks to the control freaks on the Homeowners Association board. The final straw came when I got slapped with a $1.200 fine for my fire pit and hazardous decor. I saw red when I opened that letter. I'd had enough of the Homeowners Association harassing me and ruining my property. I decided to fight back. I researched the Homeowners Association bylaws and rules thoroughly. Just as I suspected, nowhere did it prohibit fire pits or garden decorations. Armed with this knowledge, I showed up at the next Homeowners Association board meeting and respectfully but firmly presented my case. I explained that I'd reviewed the bylaws and they clearly did not forbid my fire pit or yard decor. I also pointed out that dozens of neighbors had similar decorations without issue. You should have seen the look on Karen's pinched face when I called her out. She hemmed and hawed but had no legitimate reason for their behavior. I demanded they retract the fines and stop harassing me about harmless decor. After much grumbling and consulting each other in hushed voices, the board agreed to reverse the fines, but Karen didn't let me have the last word. Fine, we'll make an exception for you, but don't expect any special treatment in the future, she snipped. I resisted the urge to tell Karen where she could shove her special treatment, but I stood my ground and refused to back down. The next weekend, I rebuilt my brick fire pit and put my garden gnomes right back where they belonged, and just out of spite, I added a new pink flamingo statue I found at a garage sale. Come at me, Homeowners Association. In the months since, I haven't heard a peep from the Homeowners Association about my yard. I'm no longer going to let them intimidate me or ruin my property. If they try to harass me again, I'm fully prepared to take legal action. The moral of the story is, don't let your Homeowners Association push you around. Know your rights as a homeowner. If they overstep their bounds, be ready to fight back. I'm glad I stood up for myself instead of letting my yard get stripped of all character. The Homeowners Association exists to maintain standards, not control our lives. It feels good not having to tiptoe around my own front lawn anymore. My fire pit and garden gnomes aren't going anywhere. If you enjoyed the story, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. The next one is Pro Revenge Story. My name is Alex and I live in a quiet subdivision outside of the city. The houses here are all cookie-cutter doubles, sharing walls but nothing else. For years, my neighbor was an elderly widow named Margaret. She kept to herself and we exchanged pleasantries when we saw each other in the yard. When Margaret passed away last year, her house sat empty for several months before it finally sold. The new owner was a guy named Mike who worked in construction. Mike didn't move in, though. Instead, he rented the place out to a group of four guys who were in the country doing seasonal work. 
I didn't mind at first, but then the noise started. Every weekend it was thumping music and drunken shouting well into the early hours of the morning. I tried asking them politely to keep it down, but it didn't make a difference. After a few sleepless weekends, I contacted Mike to complain. He brushed me off saying it wasn't his problem, so I started calling the police to report the disturbances. The police would show up, but the tenants would just wait until they left and then crank up the music again. By this point, I'd had enough. I wasn't going to move. I liked my house and I refused to be bullied out of my home by these jerks. So I started looking for options. A friend suggested I look into whether Mike had obtained all the right permits for renting out his property. I did some research and discovered he had never filed for the proper permits. I submitted an anonymous complaint to the city's code enforcement office. An inspector came out and issued him a violation notice for operating an illegal rental unit. Mike was furious. He threatened me, insisting I had ratted him out. I denied it, but inside I felt a smug sense of satisfaction. This was just the beginning. Over the next few weeks I watched closely for any other infractions on Mike's property. It wasn't long before I caught the tenants illegally dumping trash in the back alley. Another anonymous call to the city resulted in Mike being fined for multiple sanitation violations. The tenants retaliated by being louder than ever. But I wasn't about to back down. If anything, it made me more determined. One Saturday afternoon, I saw Mike pull up with a truck full of construction materials. Soon, the cacophony of saws and hammers joined the blaring music next door. I immediately reported Mike for doing unpermitted renovations. This time, a stop work order was issued. Mike was livid. He came over, pounds on my door, and threatens me again, certain I'm behind his troubles. I stand firm, insisting I've done nothing wrong. Prove it, I say, and close the door in his face. In the following weeks, Mike racked up fines on top of fines. The rundown house couldn't be rented without permits. He couldn't do any repairs without permits. Everything he tried just dug his hole deeper and deeper. The best part was, I didn't have to do anything anymore. Mike's own bungling and temper were bringing about his downfall. All I had to do was sit back and watch the show. Eventually, Mike put the house up for sale just to be rid of the headache, but thanks to the violations and unfinished renovations, he had to practically give it away. As Mike's truck pulled away for the last time, I stood in my yard and waved, a satisfied smile on my face. The new buyers seemed like nice people. I had a good feeling we wouldn't have any more problems. The next one is Am I the A-Hole story. I live next door to this guy named John and his wife Karen and their two teenage daughters. He's the nosiest neighbor on the block. I swear he's watching everything I do and always has some comment about it later. Let me give you some background first. I'm Megan, I'm 28, and I moved into this house about a year ago after a bad breakup. I was hoping a fresh start in a new neighborhood would help me move on. John and Karen have lived next door for over 20 years. Their girls, Emily and Sarah, are 15 and 17. Anyway, ever since I moved in, John has been weirdly obsessed with my comings and goings. If I have a few friends over for drinks or dinner, He'll watch us from his front porch or peek out the windows. The next day, he'll make some snide comment about how many people were at my house and how late we were up. Like, wow, looked like quite the rager at Megan's last night with a whole seven people. Kept me up past 1 a.m. If I let my grass grow a little too long between mowings, he'll remark that I must be going out every night this week if I can't even find one day to do yard work. Never mind that I work long hours and just don't have the time or energy some weeks. If I have friends park on the street, he'll come right over and ask me to have them move their cars so he can get his precious boat of a Cadillac SUV in and out of his driveway easier. He'll even know which cars belong to which friends of mine, like, Hey Megan, can you get Tyler to move his old beater Honda so I can get my car out? And if I'm grilling up some burgers in the backyard, he has the audacity to complain about the smoke blowing towards his house and grumble that no one needs to barbecue for three damn hours. It's clear from the oddly specific details he comments on that John is watching my house way more closely than is appropriate. I would never notice, let alone keep tabs on, that level of detail about any of my neighbors' lives. I mind my own business. His nosy observations make me really uncomfortable. At first I tried to be polite, moving cars when asked, wrapping up my cookouts after a reasonable time. I've even gently suggested he stop spying on me, saying stuff like, John, my friends don't really like feeling watched so could you give us some privacy, please? But he keeps right on doing it. After months of this, I finally snapped last week. He made a snippy comment about me needing to bring my trash cans back up my driveway sooner after trash day. I turned to him and said firmly, John, I want you to stop watching my house so closely all the time. It really bothers me. He feigned confusion, 
like he had no idea what I was talking about. So I continued, Look, I'm a single woman living alone. Having my neighbor obsessively spy on me and keep tabs on my every move is very unsettling. He kept playing dumb, getting defensive. That's when I went for the heart of it. You have two teenage daughters. Imagine some older guy you didn't know or like was watching Emily and Sarah's house all the time, noting when they were home or gone, which friends came over, what cars their friends drive, watching the girls when they're out in the yard or sitting on the porch. Don't you see how extremely inappropriate and creepy that would feel? John got really angry when I put it that way. He sputtered, That's totally different. How dare you compare me to some peeping Tom? But I stood firm. It's not different, John. I'm asking you to empathize for a minute. Try to understand how violated I feel being monitored 24-7 by my neighbor. Your reaction just now shows you do get how wrong it is. That's exactly how I feel about what you're doing. After that heated exchange, John stormed off in a huff. He's avoided me the past few days. I'm relieved he finally seems to be leaving me in peace. But I wonder if I went too far, using his daughters as an example like that. I know it pissed him off, but it was the only way I could think of to make him understand my perspective. So what do you think? Was I out of line here? Should I have handled this differently? Let me know your thoughts. I could really use some feedback. Comments on the story. Comment 1. Not the a-hole. You were completely justified calling out John's creepy behavior. As a fellow woman living alone, I would be super uncomfortable with a neighbor spying on me like that. You tried addressing it nicely at first, but sometimes you have to be blunt for it to sink in. Comparing it to his own daughter's was smart. It forced him to see it from your perspective. Don't doubt yourself. You handled this perfectly. John is the one acting like a jerk. Comment 2. You are the a-hole. Whoa, way too harsh bringing his kids into this. You didn't need to go there to make your point. John's nosiness is annoying, but likely comes from a place of boredom slash loneliness, not ill intent. You could have had a calm discussion about boundaries without attacking his daughters. That was hitting below the belt. You owe him an apology for taking it too far. Comment 3. Everyone sucks here. You both need to grow up. John shouldn't be all up in your business, but flying off the handle and screaming at him wasn't cool either. There were more diplomatic ways to address this than blowing up. Sounds like you have a bad relationship all around. Time to build some fences, literally and figuratively. Agree to give each other space and privacy going forward, and no more shouting matches. Post update. Hey everyone, it's been about a month since I posted about my nosy neighbor John, and I wanted to give you an update. First off, thanks for all the feedback on my handling of the situation. The general consensus seemed to be that while I was justified calling John out, I may have crossed a line using his daughters as an example. I get where you all are coming from. After I posted, I took a few days to cool off and then went to speak with John again. I apologized for making it about his girls, explaining I was just trying desperately to make him empathize, but I reiterated that his constant watching of my home life has to stop as it's incredibly unnerving. John was surprisingly calm and apologetic this time. He said my calling him a creep had been a real wake-up call. He claimed he never meant to make me uncomfortable. He just tends to be nosy and gossipy without thinking. But he recognized how inappropriate and alarming his behavior was, especially with me being a single woman. We agreed going forward to be nothing more than cordial, polite neighbors. No more comments on each other's lives or guests. I feel confident this understanding will stick. And if not, I reminded John I have no problem reporting peeping toms to the neighborhood watch and police. He assured me that won't be necessary. So thanks again for the feedback. In the end, being firm while taking the high road resolved this peacefully. John knows he crossed a line and needs to respect my privacy from now on, and I learned to stand up for myself while choosing my words carefully. I feel much better having this resolved. Hope you all are doing well. Are you hungry for more slices of stories? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to never miss out on any videos. See you tomorrow at Story Slices.